whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year, he gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds, the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. I have been one acquainted with the night. I have walked out in rain and back in rain. I have outwalked the further city light. I have looked down the saddest city lane. I have passed by the watchman on his beat and dropped my eyes, unwilling to explain. I have stood still and stopped the sound of feet when far away an interrupted cry came over houses from another street but not to call me back or say goodbye. And further still at an unearthly height, one luminary clock against the sky proclaimed the time was neither wrong nor right. I have been one acquainted with the night. My long, two-pointed ladder's sticking through a tree toward heaven still. And there's a barrel that I didn't fill beside it, and there may be two or three apples I didn't pick upon some bough. But I am done with apple picking now. Essence of winter sleep is on the night, the scent of apples. I am drowsing off. I cannot rub the strangeness from my sight I got from looking through a pane of glass I skimmed this morning from the drinking trough and held against the world of hoary grass. It melted and I let it fall and break, but I was well upon my way to sleep before it fell and I could tell what form my dreaming was about to take. Magnified apples appear and disappear stem end and blossom end, and every fleck of russet showing clear. My instep arch not only keeps the ache, it keeps the pressure of a ladder round. I feel the ladder sway as the boughs bend, and I keep hearing from the cellar bin the rumbling sound of load on load of apples coming in, for I have had too much of apple picking. I am overtired of the great harvest I myself desired. There were ten thousand thousand fruit to touch, cherish in hand, let down and not let fall. For all that struck the earth, no matter if not bruised or spiked with stubble, went surely to the cider apple heap, as of no worth. One can see what will trouble this sleep of mine, whatever sleep it is. Were he not gone, the woodchuck could say whether it's like his long sleep as I describe it's coming on, or just some human sleep. My sorrow when she's here with me thinks these dark days of autumn rain are beautiful as days can be. She loves the bare, the withered tree. She walks the sodden pasture lane. Her pleasure will not let me stay. She talks and I am fain to list. She's glad the birds are gone away. She's glad her simple worsted gray is silver now with clinging mist. The desolate, deserted trees, the faded earth, the heavy sky, the beauties she so truly sees. She thinks I have no eye for these and vexes me for reason why. Not yesterday I learned to know the love of bare November days before the coming of the snow, but it were vain to tell her so. 
and they are better for her praise. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same, and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I... I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. When I see birches bent to left and right across the lines of straighter, darker trees, I like to think some boy's been swinging them. But swinging doesn't bend them down to stay as ice storms do. Often you must have seen them loaded with ice a sunny winter morning after a rain. They click upon themselves as the breeze rises and turn many colored as the stir cracks and crazes their enamel. Soon the sun's warmth makes them shed crystal shells, shattering and avalanching on the snow crust. Such heaps of broken glass to sweep away, you'd think the inner dome of heaven had fallen. They are dragged to the withered bracken by the load, and they seem not to break. Though once they're bowed so low for long, they never right themselves. You may see their trunks arching in the woods years afterward, trailing their leaves on the ground like girls on hands and knees that throw their hair before them over their heads to dry in the sun. But I was going to say, when truth broke in with all her matter of fact about the ice storm, I should prefer to have had some boy bend them as he went out or in to fetch the cows, some boy too far from town to learn baseball, whose only play was what he found himself, summer or winter, and could play alone. One by one he subdued his father's trees by riding them down over and over again until he took the stiffness out of them and not one but hung limp, not one was left for him to conquer. He learned all there was to learn about not launching out too soon and so not carrying the tree away clear to the ground. He always kept his poise to the top branches, climbing carefully with the same pains you used to fill a cup up to the brim and even above the brim. Then he flung outward, feet first with a swish, kicking his way down through the air to the ground. So was I once myself a swinger of birches, and so I dream of going back to be. It's when I'm weary of considerations, and life is too much like a pathless wood where your face burns and tickles with the cobwebs broken across it, and one eye is weeping from a twig's having lashed across it open. I'd like to get away from earth a while, and then come back to it and begin over. May no fate willfully misunderstand me and half grant what I wish and snatch me away not to return. Earth's the right place for love. I don't know where it's likely to go better. I'd like to go by climbing a birch tree and climb black branches up a snow-white trunk toward heaven till the tree could bear no more but dipped its top and set me down again. That would be good both going and coming back. One could do worse than be a swinger of virtues.
tree at my window, window tree. My sash is lowered when night comes on, but let there never be curtain drawn between you and me. Vague dream head lifted out of the ground, and thing next most diffused to cloud. Not all your light tongues talking aloud could be profound. But tree, I have seen you taken and tossed. And if you have seen me when I have slept, you have seen me when I was taken and swept and all but lost. That day she put our heads together. Fate had her imagination about her. Your head so much concerned without her. Mine within her weather. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that sends the frozen ground swell under it and spills the upper boulders in the sun and makes gaps even two can pass abreast. The work of hunters is another thing. I have come after them and made repair where they have left not one stone on a stone, but they would have the rabbit out of hiding to please the yelping dogs. The gaps I mean, no one has seen them made or, or heard them made. But at spring mending time we find them there. I let my neighbor know beyond the hill, and on a day we meet to walk the line and set the wall between us once again. We keep the wall between us as we go. To each the boulders that have fallen to each, and some are lows and some so nearly balls we have to use a spell to make them balance. Stay where you are until our backs are turned. We wear our fingers rough with handling them. Oh, just another kind of outdoor game, one on a side, it comes to little more there where it is. We do not need the wall, he is all pine, and I am apple orchard. My apple trees will never get across and eat the cones under his pines, I tell him. He only says good fences make good neighbors. Spring is the mischief in me, and I wonder if I could put a notion in his head. Why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it where there are cows? But here there are no cows. Before I build a wall, I'd ask to know what I was walling in or walling out and to whom I was like to give offense. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that wants it down. I could say else to him, but it's not else exactly, and I'd rather he said it for himself. I see him there, bringing a stone grasped firmly by the top in each hand like an old stone savage armed. He moves in darkness, as it seems to me, not of woods only, in the shade of trees. He will not go behind his father's saying, and he likes having thought of it so well, he says again, good fences make good neighbors. <laughs> ¶¶ 